Welcome to today's couch discussion where we're going to talk about reflexes and what it entails. So if you have a child that is constantly tired or fidgety or not concentrating or over emotional, don't go anywhere because this is something that you need to hear. My name is Marina Yoyster. I'm a registered kinokineticist. I'm also the mother of two boys and I've received advanced training in integrated learning therapy as well as SNAP, which stands for Special Needs Adapted Program. So I'm also a tutor for autistic children. And next to me, well, you can introduce yourself. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Miranda Boeta. I'm an educational psychologist and I'm also a mom and I'm in practice. And we see a lot of um, children with learning difficulties. So we are used to doing therapy to help equip those children, to help give them skills to live with their difficulties or to even improve it. But sometimes we struggle. Sometimes we get to a point where we're not making any progress. Mm -hmm. And then we have to look at things a little bit differently. And too often we found that there's a reflex. Some reflexes should be awake, but then they are asleep, and some should be asleep, and then they are awake. And all of this interferes with learning to a massive extent. Mm. I've also done the integrated learning mm. therapy, and this has helped me to realize that we know too little about reflexes and how they affect learning. Mm. Marina, you can tell us a bit about the background and the availability yeah. and the top people that mm. we should look out for mm. in this field. So what happened is a few years ago, we obviously, we, uh, we journey, we have journey, that's the better way, with our oldest boy up to now. Um, and I don't have time to give a testimony about it, but what I found is I needed more answers to what we were struggling with than my master's degree. So I had to go beyond my knowledge and I started doing research and I found that, yes, there's uh, topics about and, and reflex discussion in South Africa, but not to a big extent. Um, it was very difficult to get a, a good handle and a grip on reflexes. So I had to start looking overseas and I started exploring uh, books and courses uh, with regards to Sally Goddard. Uh, she's highly recommended worldwide. Um, and then also Dr. Muscatova. And based on all of the information, I obviously started researching a bit more on people who's doing it in, in South Africa. Dr. Cockett has also um, an introductory course to reflexes. And then Dr. Mila de Dior, she also touched base on certain reflexes. But I, I figured, I quickly learned that there's so much more to reflexes than the obvious. Um, and before I go on, I just want to say that research is still catching up mm -hmm. on this. Okay, so when we talk to parents, when we talk to teachers, there's um, evidence, there's definite evidence that children benefit from it. However, what's very difficult is if you do the research basis on it, the ethical part of working with children, etc., a lot of times it makes it very difficult to explore the influence of an integration program on reflexes itself. Now, if you talk to doctors, if you talk to nurses, if you talk to occupational therapists, kinokinetists, physios, we all learn about reflexes in our training. Um, it's very short modules, though, and it's um, not to a big extent. And I have found personally that, you know, whenever we, we were stuck in our child's development and I went back to reflexes, there were always little reflex that were like either sleeping or not sleeping, like Marina said. And we'll quickly touch base on that now. now. But once we started working with our boy and with other children, I want to quickly maybe jump in and give this testimony. I saw a little girl in the practice where the mom brought her in and she said, listen, my, ch my child is clumsy, not to the extent where she can't participate in sport, but some things doesn't add up for us. Like she's participating in netball, she's doing well at school. But her teacher mentions that she trips uh, over her feet quite easily and she was very afraid um, of riding a bicycle and then obviously doing back swimming, backstroke swimming. And I said, wow, I'm actually intrigued as well. Bring your child in. And I did a full assessment and everything else as expected was fine and within normal range, except some of her primitive reflexes. And when I explained to the mom the, the basic principles of reflexes and specifically when that specific reflex had to kick in and do its job, she's like, 
my child was actually sick during that period. Mm. And that we see quite often is if they have either trauma or um, a nutritional um, allergy or they have experienced a, a sickness period, then that specific reflex um, is compromised, so to speak. So what we started doing with her is we, we gave them simple exercises and they did it for a period of six weeks. And after six weeks, she came back and she's like, you can't believe it. My child is doing brilliantly in swimming. The teacher can't understand what actually happened to her. She doesn't trip over her feet anymore. She's riding a bicycle as if it was never a problem before. And it wasn't a question, a matter of six weeks. I also spoke to another kinesthetist where she had a child that had severe uh, issues with speech. Um, and what she did is she recommended her to go and see a speech therapist and the report came back and it was a very negative report like she needed XYZ therapy for so many months etc and then the kinokineticist mentioned one of the reflexes that may be a culprit so what happened at the end of the day she gave them exercises again for that specific reflex again within six weeks she asked her, she said, and, and when I say six weeks, please, every child is different. <laughs> Don't, this is not a quick fix. Mm. The way that a baby crawls, some babies need to crawl for six months, others for six weeks. But it's a, it's a timing process. But for them, within six weeks, they did the exercises daily. They sent her off to the speech therapist. She re-evaluated the child. She was actually a bit um, irritated by the fact that she had to do an assessment within six weeks again. And she saw a completely different child. If you see the report as well, it looks like a, a different child. And she was amazed. She was like, what did you do? Mm. And again, it was a reflex that was addressed. Yeah. So we find quite often, Marinda, to get back, um, you were asking, you know, how can it play part in a child's scholastic development? What, what is the, the symptoms that you see? Uh, we find quite often that a child battles with concentration difficulties, with motor development, with emotional development. A lot of times there's a child that's oversensitive and they cry for nothing and there was no trauma um, and at the end of the day if you go back and you do a, a proper assessment you find a reflex mm -hmm. so what I also take from this Marina is that you can never think that my child did go through the cra crawling process they did, did mm. go through everything it can't be a primitive reflex because all of those who did mm. go to sleep mm. it could reappear yes and okay. um, now we've got the primitive reflexes that need to go to sleep and if they have an injury or mm. illness and it's triggered again, the solution is this very specific exercises that mm. you can do. Mm. So a mom, Marina, what should she look out for? What, mm. what are the clear telltale signs that I need to seek professional help because something might have reoccurred? Mm. Okay, so again, um, concentration difficulties. It's a symptom of something bigger than only concentration. So it can be it can be ADHD, but it can also be a, rivet, a primitive reflex. Now, one of the reflexes I want to quickly touch base on. It's um, such an important reflex. It's the ATNR reflex, the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. Now, you don't need to know the big words, but this reflex helps a baby to crawl out of the birth canal, um, so to speak. So it's literally, it's very important. Um, it plays its function, but then it needs to go to sleep. Now the ATNR is every time that you turn your neck, um, a baby around about, let's say, four months, if they turn their neck to a specific side, that arm on that side extends, and the opposite leg pulls up. So we call it the flexing um, or the fencing uh, position as well. And it has very good reason as well because it helps to establish your visual system onto your hand. So it's eye-hand coordination and it helps the opposite parts of your muscles to work together and it prepares the baby for the crawling. But if that reflex now is stuck, it didn't go to sleep, then a mommy will typically see a child battling to write. Because now what happens is if they sit in the class and they need to copy from a book next to them every time that they turn their head remember now that reflex a reflex happens automatically you don't think about it so now it kicks in that your child struggles to stay on the line he's struggling to write in a straight line um, he cannot cope with copying and mm. it's not a definite oh i turn my head and then my arm makes sense you yeah, know it's it not a, it's to be a big yes, movement. it's a subtle movement the same with the stnr where if you look up and down for instance 
you can get a fidgety t child because it has a different uh, function, this specific reflex. Mm. So now your legs extend or they flex the whole time. So now you get a child that's struggling to sit still in the classroom and the teacher think it's a fidgety problem and mm. it, this uh, may be ADHD, but in actual fact it can be just a primitive reflex. Yeah. So, so we need to understand mm. as well that um, how do we get that reflex to sleep? Yeah. It needs repetition, mm. very specific movement mm. in a certain way for a certain amount of time. Yeah. So the child or the baby that got all of those repetitions through the birth canal, mm. that wiggle yes. reflex. Mm. Um, now, maybe that was a baby that, that was born via cesarean mm. section, didn't get all that repetition. Yeah. And now my child is wiggling on the chest. Yes. Looks like a... Like yeah. an active child, mm. but in fact, it's a primitive reflex that mm. just still trying to get the repetition yes. it needs. Mm. Again, now we just address it with this, the right exercises mm. for the right amount of time, and that reflex will go to mm. sleep. You talked about what is the obvious signs and telltale mm. signs for, for parents, even teachers, a therapist. Um, Sensory integration, if they battle with any sensory processing, they're either super sensitive to sensory input or they don't register at all. Um, it's typical the children where they bump their head, they don't feel the, the bump on their head or they have a scratch and it's bleeding and they don't even notice it. Um, or to the other side where they're fearful of heights, for instance. Now your sensory systems and your reflexes are very closely connected. So in the course that I've also written, and that course is for parents, for teachers, for therapists, um, it, it focuses specifically on a specific reflex, like let's say the fear paralysis reflex or the moral reflex, and then based on the certain amount of signs and symptoms that you can observe, you can do exercises for that to go to sleep. And it's very easy. Mm -hmm. Again, it needs a bit of dedication from your side. You need to do it on a daily basis as often as possible, but you will reap the rewards. Now, like Marinda said, sometimes it does appear. And again, if it appears, it's not a train smash. It needs to obviously interfere with your functionality, your daily um, ability to function uh, optimally. Now, when I did write the reflex at one stage, uh, one of the reflexes is called the grasping reflex. And it's typically when... You know when you put your finger out and your baby grasps your finger and they hold on tight and you think this is the most amazing thing ever, my baby loves me. <laughs> and it's an actual fact because of the reflex. So on that specific day, every time I put my hand in, I slotted it in, my hand would close, but just to the one side. And I was actually quite concerned about that. Um, I did go to the doctor. I was sick in that period as well, but it went away after a while again. Again, some things can appear and reappear and disappear and it's not a problem. It's when a child is stuck and they don't get the ability to function from this point of view. So from, this brain is very, very important. Your CEO and your, your primitive reflexes helps you to function from the bottom part of your brain. So if you're stuck here, it compromises your ability to think clear, to organize, to plan, to reason to solve problems, that mm. all is very um, appropriate for school. Yeah, it's it's like building blocks. You need yes. to start at the bottom and everything should be solid in your foundation mm. or in your primitive brain before you can mm. move up to your higher functioning brain. Mm. And when we think about schoolwork and a child sitting in a classroom, all of that happens mm. here. So we don't want them to get stuck yes. in the survival brain because then they won't be able mm. to do what's expected of them. Mm. And a, a child like that gets very frustrated mm. because they get the sense of being um, you not know, good enough, not good and, enough, or not mm. clever enough. Mm. And and that's not the the case, um, at, the all. case at all. It's mm. really just that child needs to survive the primitive reflexes wants them to survive yeah. he's stuck there he cannot do the mm. higher order function and what's interesting is one of the reflexes for instance uh, the babinski reflex and you may have heard about this um doctors it's typical the test that doctors do when you're in a car accident and where they can determine the amount of brain damage that you may have had in the accident so if we test that, for instance, with little ones, it's appropriate up to the age of two to have the Babinski. But after the age of two, if it's still present, it can, for instance, be an indication of uh, sugar, blood sugar levels, what a, diabetes. diabetes. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. 
It can mm. be an indication that there's diabetes. It can be an indication of low blood sugar, etc. So there's a medical condition that's also connected to it. It's not only a cognitive or social or motor problem that can occur. So it gives us very valuable information about a child's development. So if there's anything that you're concerned about when it comes to your child's development, it's a good way of starting or having a starting point um, you know and make sure that everything is in place a lot of people get trained in primitive reflexes i personally have found that our knowledge is very limited and that's why i've written this more comprehensive type of course mm. so that we can jump in and make sure we don't miss anything and help the children to the best of our mm. ability yeah and I, I would like to add the um the course is structured in a way where teachers or parents without previous knowledge of um, reflexes or anything educational developmental mm. wise can are actually taught the background of the reflex but also how to easily assess mm. the child mm. to see if that reflex is what it where it should be is mm. it asleep or not is it awake if it should be awake mm. or not and then how to integrate it so there's mm. a, a very big practical component mm. which will give a teacher or a mom the the tools, tools in mm. hand to address this with the child mm. and there's some exercises that's easy to do in the classroom with mm. every child because I mean everyone can benefit from this mm. you if you do it then you don't need it it's not a problem yes. but if you do it then you need it it's amazing yes. so um, Marina is gonna mm. do a little extra small video yeah. clip for us for teachers and with a, a warm up or welcome in the classroom mm. or let's wake up your brain type mm. of exercise and teachers you can do this with all of your kids in the classroom mm. every morning and then observe if if there's a change in some mm. of the kids behavior yes. or um, in the schoolwork mm. what I do want to mention though is if you do the course please it's not a diagnostic tool mm. so if you're a mom <laughs> if you're a therapist you are allowed to diagnose but if you're a mom don't go and over diagnose all your friends children and say mm. oh this is a spinal gallon and this is a morrow and this is a fear mm. paralysis you know it it can be deceiving because now you have the knowledge and it can feel like you over you know you you're seeing it everywhere you go mm. um, but this is more a tool for you in order for your children to thrive if there's any Thing that keeps them from from thriving and reaching their full potential mm. have a look at this yeah, and it mm. should be always should be holistic yes that's why you wouldn't yeah. be able to diagnose with this mm. because we do this when we've looked at everything else yes. and there's still something that doesn't make sense mm. so um, just to summarize what you actually did say mm. Marina moms if you see or teachers if you see something emotionally mot with motor yeah. planning or motor skills and mm. um, sensory integration or sensory sensitivity or mm. um, not being sensitive enough not taking in the information as you mm. should then those are warning signs mm. and you should get an assessment mm. yeah definitely um, oh, there's so many more things we can actually discuss this is like hours worth of discussing but we need to wrap it up and we want to thank you for watching and we want to invite you to take part in this conversation. Leave us mm. a comment. Give us some of the exercises that you have learned. Maybe you have seen a professional and they have taught you some exercises that worked wonderfully mm. for you as a, a household. Or so, leave your questions. Marina yes. is quite an expert. Yeah. She did um, go through this with her mm. own son. So, yes. I mean, there, there's no one that can tell you more about this mm. from own experience. <laughs> and she will be happy to answer questions and redirect mm. you to the resources that yes. you need. Yes, definitely. Until we see each other again next time, keep well. Bye-bye.